from Alexandria Knife Sharpening and Laser Engraving. So I wanted to give you a quick tip that I use when I have to do an engraving on something, especially tumblers and things like that, that I want to be sure everything looks just right. And maybe I don't want to just go right out and do it on the item immediately. I will sometimes do a test engraving using black painter's tape. It works really well. I'll give you the settings here that I use on my F1 to do it. And this way, I know things look right before I do the permanent mark. Now, if you want to do the same thing with your blue laser, I have found that green painter's tape works really well for doing that. Now, to do this engraving, I decided I was not going to use a rotator. I'm using a drink jig made by Samcraft. It works really well, and I'm going to use the curved material setting. So you can see I got a little red light there on one of my measurements, which means it failed, so I have to do it again. If that fails, usually just try it again, and sometimes adjusting your lighting in your room will work, and even blocking some of the light going in. Because this is a really shiny item, the laser might struggle sometimes to read all the measurements. See the little blue dot hitting the cup in different areas? So darkening up the room will help, and sometimes just taking a few less readings, which is what I did. I deleted one row and one column from it, and then it worked just fine. We got all of our readings. We're just about completed here. We'll see what happens here. And if it's done, then I get a nice 3D depth map. There's my depth map. It looks good. I can then use that to place my engraving. We're gonna hit, we are where we wanna be. I do have to change my settings though. All right, fiber, because we are doing an actual engraving. We were set up for the tape, but now we're going to do an actual engraving. So the engraving I like to use, so 50 power, 50 speed is my favorite. One pass, and I like 300 lines per centimeter. So it's going to take a little bit, but we're going to hit process. And here we go. Start signal. So there's our start signal. We are underway. So what happens on this setting is the laser will actually adjust the height up and down to compensate for the, uh, let me back it up, maybe you can see it. I'll show you. You'll see the laser head will actually move as it has to adjust for the engraving. And that's how it keeps everything in focus it literally moves that head up and down as it goes when it reaches those angles and parts where it needs to make an adjustment to the, uh... there he goes. You see, it just moved up a little bit because it's now on the middle, it's at the highest point. So it's a very cool feature that they have on X-Tool lasers. My S1 has a similar feature it just has a different way of measuring. It doesn't measure with the laser. It actually measures with a probe, but it will give you that 3D depth map and then accommodate for your artwork so your artwork stays in focus. On the comm marker using Lightburn software, there is a thing called cylinder correction and you can use cylinder correction to do a similar thing, just like we're doing here. X-Tool has made this very, very easy to do. It's a very cool feature. And I don't think we're gonna have to take a second pass at all. I think this looks great. I just need to add my name on the other side. So it's finishing up. It's actually putting my little laser beam in. One engraved Yeti coffee cup. This one is for me. Very cool. So now I'm gonna take this off of here and I'm just gonna clean it. A little bit of scotch Brite works really well. And there it is, guys. Perfectly placed on my 
Yeti coffee cup, and I'm glad it didn't screw it up because that would have been like 25 bucks. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put my name on the other side because I don't want anyone else drinking out of my cup. One laser engraved Yeti stainless coffee cup. Hey, I figured, you know what, why don't I show you this whole setup here? Because some of you might be wondering how to do this. This is a, a really great jig by, that I'm using, by the way, from Samcraft. And... I want to show you this jig. So you'll see lots of drinkware jig out there. And if you don't want to take the time sometimes setting up a full rotator, sometimes it's quicker just to use a, a drink jig. And if you're only doing like, this is about, about 40 centimeters, maybe 45 centimeters, the, that logo was on the other side. That's a, that's a pretty good size that I have found that you can get away with no problem doing without using a rotator and especially since the x tool has that contour feature but what i love about sam crafts jig i want to show you this jig i'm going to set the whole thing up from scratch anyway just to show you but he has these drink drink jigs but he's the only one that i've ever seen that added this very cool feature he's got this stackable attachment that can go on both sides because if you've ever tried to do a cup what happens is, watch, see the handle keeps falling? Very annoying. So you got to kind of stack a whole bunch of stuff under that handle to hold it. But not if you get the Samcraft jig. And he makes this for Com Marker. He makes it for X-Tool. All you have to do is got this little snap-on, and he gives you one for each side. So I already did the other side. So the nice thing is, I didn't lock my jig in. I probably should have. But if you have your everything locked in, all you do is simply slide your handle over to the other side, and you're good to go right on your other side. You're all perfectly set up and aligned and ready to go and do your graving on the other side. Since I'm using the contour feature and wanted to show you guys how to do it, I'm just going to do it all scratch. I'll show you what you want to do is you want to make one, you want to make sure you're level. And I am going to raise this up a little bit. And then you also want to check, you can check your handle and that is close enough. If you're going to use the contour feature, the first thing you want to put your blue dot in the very middle of your cup or whatever you're working with, wherever you're gonna be engraving. That's super important, making sure you're right in the middle. I'll do other things sometimes to make sure I'm lined up evenly. You can, you can use your holes here that are on your machine, your screw machine holes. So sometimes I'll put my jig, I might line my jig up right on that, on those machine holes, and then try and just, you know, get it as close to perfectly in the center as possible but you want to get basically you want that highest point and you want to make sure you're just nice and level so i got my highest point there i'm using the blue drink jig that was actually made for the com marker so i've grabbed a piece of fencing here just to keep that from moving around but they do like i said he makes this exact same kit for x tool since i have so many fencing pieces I'm just gonna use a little piece of fence here to hold it in place. Let me zoom in, make sure you can see that. It's a little hard to see sometimes in the laser. My blue light is right here and it's right at the top middle of my cup. And that's the most important thing. You wanna be dead center to your lens that you can be when you're doing this. The more in the center, because you'll see it's gonna give me a, a box that I have to work within. So in this mode, you can't use the picture and camera to place your items. You don't want to use that. And it actually tells you, do not position things based on the background image. So if you were to take the camera picture, you don't want to place the items using that. So what we have to do is we have to come over here to where it says curved material. And you might have to scroll down if depending on your screen, we want this one down here, which says curved material. We're going to click that. Then we're going to come up here and we have to measure again. Okay, so we're going to click measure and then we're going to click framing. And you'll see it now put a box 
on my cup. And that's the area where we can engrave in on this. And I can adjust it by moving this up and making it wider. But if I go, I can, I'm going to go higher, but I'm not going to go wider because it was, and I'm going to have to unlock this to do that. So I'm going to keep it at 50 wide because we were struggling there with getting our focus, but I am going to go a little higher. And sometimes you have to hit stop and then hit framing again for it to adjust on your material. You'll see it wasn't, for some reason, I've always noticed this with the Xtool software is sometimes it, you'll, it'll be adjusting as I make the adjustments. And other times I have to hit stop and reframe again so that you can see it. But that looks pretty good. I am happy with that. And I am going to place my name up much closer to the top on this one. So I might go even a little bit higher. And I'm going to hit framing again, only because I want to put my name up closer to the top up there. All right, so I'm good with that. Now I'm going to hit next. And here is the measuring process again. So we are going to hit start measuring and we'll see how it does. See if it captures all of them. There's our little blue light going around again. And so far so good. It's, it seems to be, uh, getting all of the, uh, points just fine so far. We'll keep our fingers crossed. It struggled last time a little bit with it. But I've usually found if just one point fails, if you see all of them are going like that and then you have one failed, usually it's worth doing it again. And it's, it's generally been shiny objects that I've had it struggle with. So something like this, like a, a stainless steel Yeti that you know has no powder coating on it at all. It's just all stainless steel. But so far, so good. It looks like it's getting all of it. That looks great. And it did. So that captured all of it. We can now click done. And here is the entire area where I can put my engraving in. I think I'm going to go with Engravers MT. That always looks good. Just got to shrink the size down. It's way too big. All right. I want to make sure that this is not turned on. And everything else looks good. Okay. We need to set this for fiber. And same settings as last time. I like 50. We're scanning. I like 50. One pass. I'm not going to do 300 this time. I'll do two. That should be plenty. It's all done. It looks nice. And we'll just uh, clean it up. And in the description, I'll leave the settings again, as well as a link to the Samcraft jig that I used on this project. Have a great day, everybody.